Hello. Happy day after Christmas. I guess maybe in the old traditions it would be, uh, I don't know if it's the first or second day of Christmas out of the 12th. Uh, the tradition is that the wise men were not there at the birth when the babe was in the manger. It took them a while to get there. And I guess that's celebrated at least partly in the 12 days so that it's Epiphany in January when is the celebration of the arrival of the wise men. Anyway, it's still the Christmas season until then. That's how I look at it. When my daughter was little, she, um, like most kids, she had too much of a tendency, uh, you know, the little greedy thing that gets a hold of us and we just want to tear through all the wrapping and get everything done at once like it's some kind of an orgasm, a present orgasm or something. And so instead, um, I started this thing where we celebrated the 12 days. And on each day, we would unwrap one gift. And uh, that wouldn't be until we had a little ceremony where I would read uh, to her from the night before Christmas, um, the other wise man, uh, different things. And then we would sing happy birthday to the baby Jesus. And, you know, just get the center of what Christmas is meant to be. And then we would unwrap a gift. And so while she didn't get everything all at once, she also got more of a Christmas than most of her, her friends and her classmates did. And it was fun while it lasted. Childhood is fun. Okay, now I'll tell on myself here before I... Oh, and I'm widescreen just in case we get any rainbows. Um, before I pushed record... I opened up WordPad and I thought, well, you know, in, in the last little while there have come to me several things from the ponderings in my heart and it came to me, oh, I'd like to share about that or that would be fun. And so I opened up WordPad and I thought, well, I'll try something new. I'll see if I can't just put a few ideas there so that I'll have little notes to go by. And you know what happened? I opened it up, drew a total blank. So I knew, you know, wasn't supposed to be doing that. So here I am again, almost totally clueless. Maybe not quite. I don't know. All right. Um, I'm getting more and more messages and comments each day. And you know, it's good for my heart. It's fun. I'm learning from you. Uh, Sometimes I'm so bowled over by the things people write to me that I have to, to laugh, you know. Uh, in a recent journal I said, do you influence me? Oh my God, I guess so. Anyway, uh, pull me from center, you don't. But you're in my center there anyway, so that's the fun way to go about that. Um, where am I going? I have a journal that I just wrote that I could read to you here, but it seems like there's more. There's, there's something on my heart that I would like to share. But you know, it's not coming forward just now, so let me read to you for a bit. It's not too long. It's only four pages. Oh, and I do want to tell you, in my journals, um, if you want to read along, so that you know what I'm saying if my enunciation isn't sufficiently clear or or something like that uh, you know they all come with a link over to the transcript and uh, you'll get to see where the ad, ad libbing is and where it isn't when I'm reading but in this one in particular I'm going to suggest that you follow the link because I give you a special invocation that I make whenever I connect up to the internet and um, I talk about that for a while, and I think it's kind of timely. I mean, here we are on the net. That's where we're finding one another. So this is called Light Beings Using the Internet. And Do Deer Eat Sunflower Seeds? And it's from 12-26-2010, first of the day, Mayan Day 6, Jaguar, which is a favorite with me. Okay. So, what is new this day after Christmas? 
pardon me, while I do the Zoom thing. You know, some people know what they're going to do before they do it. You know that's not me. Okay, what indeed? I find myself wanting this quiet time, again, after first rising, in which to commune with both self and guide or higher self before connecting up with the web and all of those diverse energies. It can be rather hard to find oneself one's clear internal voice in the midst of that. In this way, we can have something of the mountain cave where we've spent many lifetimes seeking source, seeking God. We can enjoy something of that privacy if we are willing to disconnect for a bit. Otherwise, on the electronic connections come so many vibrations and energies that it becomes challenging to identify oneself. Oh, the num lock wasn't on. That's why my view didn't expand. Pardon the technical glitch. There we go. I want to be in heart. I don't want to be so much in my eyeballs straining to read, you know? Okay, a challenge to identify oneself. Strange day that we live in with all of this cacophony of energies yet unseen, unacknowledged for the most part. So what is it like to sit in relative silence and privacy here? No cell phone, the computer not connected to the internet. I do sense the quiet and peace, and I appreciate that. Though the habit plus something else seems to push us into connecting right away, we don't have to cooperate. We're not reactors. We're actors, my friends, when we're in heart. Even within our privacy, we can practice peaceful non-compliance with what doesn't resonate with the heart. <laughs> kind of strange. The bird's water in the bird bath is quite frozen this morning. We had a hard freeze last night. I set up the small heater in the garage to keep the well pump in action and functional. Though I live in the country, the house is on city water I'm glad my folks didn't cement in the well as instructed when connecting to the utility. Within, I also have a rather fancy water purification unit, which has the capacity to separate out the alkaline stream from the acid. It can be very useful. I'm not quite certain how it handles the fluoride, though. Anyway, I also use zeolite drops for the full body detox. The ones I use are called Weoria. It takes out all heavy metals, among other things. Does a good job. I bet it gets the fluoride as well. Oh well, it's only a body living in a dream mirage anyway. I have more power and control over it than by using technology, which is also part of the dream landscape. We're not subject to that for much longer now, anyway. We're rising up in consciousness and in frequency and freedom. We'll soon be back at home in higher consciousness where we'll remember our abilities, how we're not subject to anything at all in the mirage, except by our own choice. Okay, I'm going to step out here for a moment. Uh, one of the things just came to me that I wanted to share. Um, we all gripe and moan and groan and complain at times. We, we all get into that. And as you know, it's legitimate. I mean, you know, I've posted some journals that are nothing but that just about. So that's a part of the challenge of being in 3D and seeming to be subject 
to that. It's all part of the play, but on the other hand, it's all, all very real. That's the experience of it. And uh, as we're learning to step back and to step up into higher frequencies, sometimes it still gripes us that we don't have full access to our memories, our other incarnations and things. And something crossed my mind this morning that is a very tiny, itsy bitsy slice uh, that's relevant to that. When I first met Patricia Corey, it was in Vancouver, British Columbia at a, uh, a seminar, a, a, a expo, a health expo that was being given there and she was coming to speak and since Patricia lives in Italy and uh, you know I, uh, it's easier for me to go to Canada than it is to go to Europe or Italy of course. So I got my first passport and I, I went up there. It was all very exciting. My health was rather poor at the time and I was just tickled to, to be able physically to handle it. And then came the meeting. Um, she had a table before she spoke that she manned uh, with someone else there. Her niece came to visit and I had volunteered to be of assistance and uh, she gave me a free pass to, to the talk and so I worked the book table with her and so came the first meeting and I have to tell you uh, I don't know how I'm, I'm gonna put this into words but I'll give it a go Patricia's very tall she's regal and she's she's just lovely her her energy is immense and it, it was beautiful seeing a being like that. So I'm walking up to her. I have uh, a few things in my hands, you know, uh, uh, the, the little thing for the expo with what's when and my purse and so on. And what I wanted to do, and I had to really fight this hard. I wanted to drop everything, and including myself, right there at her feet. I wanted to put my hands on either side of her feet and my forehead on those feet. And it was all I could do not to fall into that. I didn't. Um, you know, I, I, I did have sufficient connection with the current time and space to know that that wouldn't be best for right now. But that shows you uh, what it was like to have that reincarnation memory of a uh, past embodiment and a past relationship that obviously was and is up for me now. I'm working through some of those things. I've had a, a tendency to revere her over much as if she was better than I am. And one of the things that we're learning now is that's just not so. It doesn't matter who it is. No one's better than anyone else. No one's worse than anyone else. Everything is one. And that's a very important level, I think, to be on and to master, to have that realization that uh, we have these tendencies, perhaps, but, you know, to recognize that anchored in heart, all is one and all are equal. And no one, including the very high beings, the Buddhists themselves, uh, they don't claim to be better than anyone else. You don't find great light beings making such claims. So when, that's, that's a really good indication when you find such claims made by people on the internet. I'm not really interested in what they have to say if they're elevating the self because that tells me where they're coming from and it's not a stream I care to drink from. You know, it's muddy water. Uh, yeah, it's still water and, 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 you know, that's not to say there's anything wrong with the soul. It's a beautiful soul, a beautiful light being, I'm sure. But, you know, whatever. We all make choices, and that's, that's how I make some of mine. So I just thought I'd share with you now. Just imagine if we had available to us even all of the memories from one particular embodiment. What a challenge that might be, and how that might interfere with our ability to interact with these people who are playing other parts, other roles today. And so I thought it was rather illuminating. 
and it helps me feel better about this temporary amnesia we've all taken on. So I'll get back to where I was. I was speaking about we're rising up in consciousness. We don't need the technology the way we think we do. And uh, we're, we're going to remember our abilities, how we're not subject to anything in the mirage except by our choice. And I'll step out again there and say, you have to know, who am I? When you say you're making a choice, who is the you making the choice? Who is, who is doing that? And a lot of times it's higher self. And if you're limiting yourself to 3D, to the body, to the mind, then you can't see that. You can't experience that you are making choice because it doesn't seem that way to your 3D persona. Okay. I will try to continue with what's written here. I see how spirit set me up here. It's all built into this journal that I'm going to get to do the various sharings. The wounding that goes on or that seems to go on by our experiencing on earth here, I wonder how much of that is real, how deep it goes. When we cross back over into light, do we have to spend time in some deep healing therapy to heal and cleanse and seal over the scars we picked up? The open wounds from our living, maybe a very hard life, there in the 3D atmosphere. I wonder how real the pain actually is. How deep does it penetrate into the soul? How much choice is involved in that as well? I can see ever more clearly why it is that we are considered heroes for simply incarnating, for showing up here. It is very hard, in spite of all the assistance we are given, to not be able to clearly perceive the assistance. Well, that can hurt. I griped a good deal about that one. We can build up resentments over such things. Losing your memory doesn't help us much either along these lines. We lose conscious connection with the calm assurance that all is well when the memory disappears. And you know, a lot of times we don't know when we're expressing something that isn't just current with us. It isn't just current. A lot of times we want to look for the reasons for things in the current embodiment. That doesn't work, folks. A lot of these things are only irritated, agitated, and brought up by, by the happenings of the current embodiment. They go way deeper. They go way far back in memory. And so trying to make sense out of a life by just looking into what mind has available in the current life is pretty useless. I mean, you can come up with some understandings, but they're not whole, they're not complete, they're not sufficient. So, you know, better to just not know. Take up your place in the heart. Okay, now where was I? The connection I have now with my guide is so precious in the midst of this whole 3D atmosphere to be able to directly communicate, even if the words are not many that we exchange, this is precious, unspeakably so. I'm going home. I seem to be working on a continual self-emptying of concepts. It's like I somehow know that it's the concepts that separate me from who I really am. So I keep a watch for them being alert for any beliefs and dumping them out quite intentionally when they appear. Pretty neat. I feel my guide is being so helpful with that by pointing them out at times, drawing my attention. Thank you, dear guide. I don't have words for how precious you are leading into 3D like this. Awesome. Wonderful. Those are two, and actually maybe my guide isn't so much bleeding into 3D as I'm bleeding into higher dimensions. I think that's how it works. What comes into awareness now, 
I just got an ascent from the guide. Okay, folks, so that's what we're doing. It's not that these things are coming down into 3D and appearing so much as that we're rising up. Makes sense. What comes into awareness now is how when we link up with the internet, being the energy beings that we are, we plug into so much more than is visible there. And much of it is wonderful, but really the bulk of it is not so hot. There are some really negative things that flow through into you and your home through the connections you make. And some of them not so much intentionally negative is it's just energy that short circuits your force field. It's just not harmonious with that. So I'm not talking about, you know, blue meanies and evil things. The obvious thing you can watch for is what internet sites you connect up with. You have some control over what comes through the connections. But overall, you really don't. You don't know what sorts of lightning quick connections, reconnections, and interconnections are going on in the background of the work that you are doing there. And you are subject to that, to those energies, whether you know it or not. Ignorance is no excuse. Now, that is as long as you remain unconscious about this stuff. There's a, a great benefit to waking up at least to realizing how we are all energy beings at core and acting on that. How? I know of a few ways I can share. One, another obvious one, is to disconnect from the net while you sleep. Even if you leave the computer on, as I do, it's better off, of course, but even so, break the connection between the machine and the internet. And that surely helps. Better yet, turn the modem off too. And same thing with your cell phone, my friend. Don't let your sleep space be invaded by the electronic soup of your days. Carve out for yourself a sacred sleep space. Have a look around. See what you've been sleeping in. What can you unplug or plug into other outlets that aren't there in your aura while your body's at rest? Aside from those rather obvious things, there's an invocation I offer whenever I'm getting ready to make the internet connection. And it goes like this, and see if you're with the transcript, you've got it there. As I enter here, I ask to be surrounded in the white light, calling upon my spirit warriors, and that's capitalized, to shield me from all vibrations that are not of the highest order also capitalized, and asking that those unwelcome energies be bounced back to their source as is appropriate to their evolutionary pace. I send my grounding cord into the below, dropping like an anchor deep within the body of the mother as I hook solidly to the earth. And you'll feel that, so you can pause there and, and make that connection. And as I embark upon this journey, I ask that the Light Ones, capitalized, guide the way, infusing the grid with the light strings of the universe. Now, light strings is also capitalized. I want you to look in your mind now at those beautiful pictures that we get from Hubble and the various telescopes and, and uh, eyes on the sky, and you see the strings it looks like the energy flowing, the, the magnetic flux lines and so on. I believe that's what uh, this light strings of the universe, uh, that's, that's the memory it touches on for me. I think we've got a, a really rotten idea about what everything is. We don't have a clue what a sun is. It is no uh, fusion machine. It, it's just not, and that's so clearly apparent in so many ways. But Science refuses to see. It just can't break out of its little grid of beliefs, don't you know? Uh, the temperature on the sun, uh, do you know where, where the greatest heat is? It's not on the sun or in the sun. It's above the surface of the sun. It's millions of degrees there. Uh, and it's, it's, there's so much that's amazing. It's electromagnetic. It's, it's not 
fusion and combustion and that kind of thing. Um, I think the universe is more electromagnetic. And so we have a whole wrong paradigm. But anyway, all right. So I say, I just finished this invocation. Any time at all spent looking over this marvelous invocation will show you that it is powerful and quite complete in the action it takes and invokes. It comes from the work of Patricia Corey in her book, No More Secrets, No More Lies, the third one of the Syrian Revelations trilogy. And that means it actually came from the Syrian High Council in their work with her as their scribe. Oh my God, I am so touched. A lovely deer was just in my front lawn, there with the birds eating sunflower seeds. Maybe she was after the wild mushrooms that grow everywhere around here. I don't know if that's what the deer was doing, but she was certainly eyeing and scenting the bird feeders. That could get a bit awkward should she decide to take her share. It's a good sturdy pole with room for six feeders, and it stands up well to the squirrels with the baffle and all, but I don't see it being deer proof. Oh my goodness. Oh well, she left. What a treat. She looked right at me through the window too. She was no more than 12 feet away. I enveloped her in warm love and appreciation for her beauty there. I'm sure she felt it too. They are sentient beings, whatever else they are. I often do that with my local wildlife, the animals. I do love them so. I am so blessed by their presence in my life. It's maybe a, a bit more of a blessing to see them in the winter this way too. What with all of the autumn leaves still littering the ground, the animals are a bit more skittish. Knowing they must make sound as they walk, they're more sensitive to what might be listening to and for them. I am so pleased by that visit. I make calls for my local deer to be invisible when I hear the hunter's guns going off. I don't like shooting for sport, nor do I care what excuses are made for it. Killing is killing, and it's such a low thing, you know, to put out food and, and trick them that way. I just can't see that the Native Americans ever hunted like that. They had the skill and the knowledge and the ability and it, it, it was dignified for hunter and hunted, unlike what's done today where they sit in their stands and wait for the animals. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Obviously, I'm opinionated about that. Okay. So uh, the only excuse that works for me is solid need, that is, hunger. That is something that nature herself understands. She will provide the meat through her beloved animals when that is appropriate. I have heard a man tell of being in just such a situation with he and his family quite hungry and not much money and having a large buck deer come into his rifle sights. Look at him and just stand there. It let him sight it as he pulled his gun up, just standing there. Somehow he knew it was a volunteer to feed his family. Don't think it wasn't, my friends. We don't know how life works. It's best not to know because then understanding can come because you don't have things inside of you fighting fighting that. Now, one can't prove such things, of course, but when living from heart, one finds what proof one needs there within. And then I give the, the citation. It's page 116 in the No More Secrets book where you'll find uh, I took the 
internet invocation from. Isn't that kind of amazing that we have beings, advanced beings, uh, the Syrians on the High Council speak to us from sixth density uh, that are concerned with the little things of our days. And it's, it's really wonderful too because they can see the energy that we're temporarily blinded to by, you know, using just the five senses uh, that the bodies uh, have been in the past largely restricted to. We don't see the flow of energy. I remember a time, and I swear to you, I promise, I wasn't on anything. I, I looked, I was meditating, sitting cross-legged in a chair. And this is a big room here. It's about um, 24 feet across or something like that. And so the full length of the room across um, was um, a television, and it was off. And it was in its cabinet. And I remember as I opened my eyes and looked across the room, I saw streams of energy flowing up from the uh, cabinet. And I closed them, and I opened them, and I closed, and it was still there, you know? And it was all streaming up. It was coherent, very much so. It was going in one direction only. It was all flowing together. Uh, and it, it was very dense. It wasn't like it was lit up, but uh, there was contrast enough, you know, with a, with a light-colored wall in the back of it that I could see these streams of energy flowing. I got up, and I walked right up and put, like, my nose right up to it and, and saw these ethereal, this ethereal energy flow. And I, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what it is. If that rings any bells with anyone, um, why it would be that way, I mean, that isn't what I would imagine if I was trying to imagine um, energy force fields and, and radiation and so on. I've never spoken about this. Um, but it was just a one-of-a-kind a -kind experience, never before or since. Anyway, I guess I've chattered enough, so happy second day of Christmas, if that's what it is. Uh, God's blessings be unto you and your house. Good day.